Greetings and welcome to this short video presentation on how I go about accessing the course that you're currently in. What we're going to look at is how we go about satisfying the needs of the assignments and it's a little confusing and I'd like to cover real quickly why that is. Uh, number one is the course text does not align properly with the course syllabus. The course text makes references to certain files, uh, the student data files. It tells you to open up a CD and browse to a folder, but there is no CD. All right. So we have to clear up this muddy area so that you can have a better uh, experience while you're up here negotiating through this uh, particular ITC 3000 or 3001 course. All right. So let's go ahead and begin. First off, uh, the welcome video that I posted doesn't do a lot as far as uh, explaining what the issues are within the course, between the course syllabus and with your uh, course text. So we're going to clear up that area. Now, first thing you want to understand is that the go-to document for all of your assignments is going to always be the course syllabus. Okay, it, that's just the way it is. That's can't get around it. If you go into the syllabus and you open it up, you're going to see that the uh, actual syllabus itself contains the files and everything else. Now I'm being prompted to save this, which is fine. I'm going to go up here. I'm using Firefox, by the way. So I'll go to Tools and I'll go to my Downloads. And then I'll just click on this. And it's going to open up whatever default PDF reader I happen to have installed. All right. So it tells you about the course text, you got the course description, the course software, which we'll cover in a little bit of detail as I get into the uh, location where all this information uh, is properly stored. All right, so as you go down and you go through the assignments, uh, let's begin with assignment one, the scholarly activity, uh, Windows versus the Mac OS. Okay, in this particular assignment, you are to go ahead and write up a uh, short uh, pro and con statement of what's good about a Windows, what's good about a Mac, and vice versa. That's all it is. And then you are uh, to locate some resources. Uh, it says it helps with Windows 8 training and troubleshooting. Okay, locate five online resources to help with the Windows 8 training and troubleshooting. All right, so you just go to the internet and you're going to type in troubleshooting Windows 8. And you're going to find some forums. You'll find some troubleshooting uh, guides. Uh, you can also use uh, the wonderful world of YouTube. So you can go up into YouTube and you can type in troubleshooting Windows 8. And there'll be lots of uh, video resources up there that you can use in lieu of just posting a URL or a link. Okay. All right. And it says format your paper using APA style. Use your own words and include citations and references as needed to avoid plagiarism. Okay. Very important when we work in a college environment that we don't plagiarize, okay? Everybody has uh, worked really hard to create some type of dynamic information and they posted it in a book, they posted it on a website, or they've done something, and that is original uh, work, and they should be given credit for it. That's how it works, okay? All right, so in the Unit 2 homework assignment, we see that we have this uh, uh, problem here for this homework assignment complete the following projects which include navigating uh, within Microsoft Word and using several of the fundamental features. Well first off the course is built around Office 2013. All right if you have Office 2010 or 2016 you're fine it's just that you're going to have to figure out where the features for your particular version of Office are located. The book will show you where they're located inside of 2013. That may not be the case in 2010 or 2016, right? But there is help. All you have to do is go to the internet and ask where is this particular feature or uh, located up inside of 2010 or 2016. For instance, you need to find where you can get to the paragraph uh, feature for uh, Office 2010. Well, you just go into Google and you would type in uh, paragraph feature or paragraph tool, ribbon, P 
paragraph tool ribbon office 2010 or word 2010 and it'll take you right out to a website where it'll give you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to locate that particular feature all right um, we also see that we have some files in here for this particular homework assignment now these are the assignments that they reference inside of the course text but only in the course text they word it a little different in the course text it says go into your uh, your CD or your browser or your Windows Explorer utility and locate the file the following file well you're not going to find it it's not there this file is not going to be on your machine it's going to be here inside the course syllabus or you can download the student files which I will show you in just a moment all right so in this particular homework assignment it says open up the declaration underscore text file well first you have to download it you can just click here to do that all right and once you get this thing downloaded I'm gonna go ahead and just open it and it's going to use Internet Explorer to download this which is fine once it gets downloaded, it's going to ask me what I want to do with the file, and from there, here it is. Okay, so this is the form, this is the text, this is the declaration underscore text. All right. So what you're going to do in here is you're going to go in and you're going to make corrections to this. For instance, it has uh, misspellings. Well, you're going to use the spell check feature inside of your Word utility, Word program to fix this. There's some formatting issues that you need to fix. There's some text that you want to highlight. There's some paragraphing that you want to fix. There's some uh, margarines that need to be fixed. There, there's, there's things in here that the exercise inside of your course text is going to take you through. And it's going to have you go through and format this declaration underscore text file properly. Okay? And you will be introduced to the features inside of the ribbon for whatever version of Word that you currently have installed on your machine. All right. Now, not to get off topic, but if you're using a Mac, you've got Word 2011, or you do have the new version of 365 for Mac. All right. Now, another problem. You must have the right version of your Office program to be able to complete the assignment in Module or uh, Unit 8. That's because it does access. I don't punish students for not having access on their machines. If you don't have access, you don't have access. I understand. I don't expect anybody to go out and buy a brand new a version of Microsoft Office 2013 Professional, right? You just have to work around that with me, all right? So you let me know that you don't have access, and then we'll come up with a workaround, okay? All right. So this is how you're going to access your files for the different projects. And if you go through the syllabus, you're going to see that every homework assignment has those files that are referenced inside of the course text. Now, if that is a problem and you would like to have those course files or the data, the student data files located on your machine so that you can make that connection between the course text and the assignments, we can do that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go back and I'm going to go into my wonderful world of ITC 3001. All right, wait for this here to load up. Okay, here we go. Now I'm back into the course here in just a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Ask the Professor forum. All right, so go into the Ask the Professor forum. And you're going to find a lot of postings that are already there. Those are for you, all right? And you can actually subscribe to this if you like. When you are done with the course and you no longer wish to receive updates from the Ask the Professor forum, go in and unsubscribe. Sending me an email saying that I should unsubscribe you, I can't do that. You, you subscribed. You need to unsubscribe. All right. So where do I find the student data files mentioned in the course text? This would be the posting that you want to use so that you can download your own personal version of the student data files. And I go through it in here step by step by step, and we have images, and we have everything that you need to understand why this is the way that you can make the connection 
between the course text and the uh, course assignments. All right. So understand, there is a disconnect between the course text and the course syllabus. The course text references student data files being on a CD. You don't have that CD, but you can download the student data files as if you did have the student CD. So all you have to do is just click here. That takes you out to the wonderful world of Wiley. This is the publisher, and you can download the student data files. All right, so this is the link for the student data files. Click on the link, and it brings up this little gizmo right here, the download. You can now save the file. Save the file to a location where you know you can find it. Wherever your default location is, that's fine. I can go ahead and I can save this to a location of my choosing. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it to my desktop. Notice that it says student underscore data underscore files dot zip. All right. You need an archive utility to be able to open this, either WinZip, WinRAR, 7-Zip, or whatever. An archive is a folder with data in it that has been compressed into a single file, all right, so that you do not have to download one file at a time. We put everything into the folder, we compress it, and that file now, or that folder now, is looked at as just being a single file. When we run the utility, we can expand the archive and we can extract the contents of that archive to another folder and have access to its contents. Real simple. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I say, no, I don't need to save it, but I'm going to go ahead and go to my desktop now. All right. I'll go to my desktop. And I'm going to look for student data files. And there they are right there. All right. So I've already extracted these. All right. So there's all the extracted files that are inside the student data files. All right. And I use my wins. Um, I use my 7-zip utility. It's a free archive utility. You can download it from the Internet. You can install it. And then your files, your archive files, will be associated with that particular utility. And then you can just right click, run 7-zip, and say, uh, here it just says add to, uh, add to, but it, when you run the utility on the archive, let's go back up here, let me do that again. Uh, let's see. Go to my desktop. And we want to run student. And there's the 7-zip right there. All right. So here's the 7-zip, and this is what it looks like when it's compressed. Now I want to extract it. If I right-click on the file, I can go to 7-zip, and it says to extract files here. Or I can extract files anywhere I want to on my machine. That's what you have to do once you download the compressed utility. But it doesn't make a difference if it's 7-zip, WinZip, WinRAR, or whatever your archive utility is. You must extract it. All right, so you once you download it, it says .zip. You right-click on it, and if you do have an archive utility, you'll have the option to extract it. If you don't, you'll have to get one. All right, back up here. Now, for this particular course, we are inside of Unit 1, Windows 8. Um, let's see, when uh, Unit 2, we have the Word documents up here. Let's see. Unit lessons. Here's the declaration dot text. So here we're talking about the word. Now again, the course syllabus does not align with the course text. But if you look at the course text and it tells you to go inside of the Word 01 lessons folder. Well, if you download the student data files, you can go into your student data files, open up the Word 01 lessons folder, and you can get your declaration underscore text file. All right? There you go. You can then save that after you modify it. Once you modify it, then you can upload it. Now, that's just one of the features that we have up inside of the Ask the Professor form. <coughs> Excuse me. We have other features as well. I'm going to go back inside the form. 
Now, you also have the option to download Office 2013 Pro on a 60-day trial. There's another posting. All right, so you can open this up, and it has all the links that you need. This is right from Microsoft. Click on the link. Takes you right out. There you go. Office Professional Plus 2013. Download it, but you must sign in and create an account before you can do so. All right. You don't get nothing for free from Microsoft. They don't work that way. All right. What else we got to decide to ask the professor for? Him? Let's check. All right, so there's everything you probably have a question about is probably already inside of the Ask the Professor form. You just got to click on the right link. How do I get a copy of Access for my Windows 8 assignments? You can also ask your questions here, and here's the instructor's contact information. All right, so now you know about as much about the student data files and getting a copy of Office 2013 Pro as I do. All right, and hopefully this is going to preclude you from getting stuck and having to send me an email or send or call me and have to wait so that you can get started with your assignments. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me, the Success Center, or the Student Support Services, and they or I can get you on the right track. All right, I'll see everybody in the discussions. Thank you.